class and today we are doing lesson 4.7 on dividing fractions. So hopefully you watched yesterday's video where we went over the initial concept. We were dividing whole numbers by fractions. Now we're dividing fractions by fractions. So let's look at this. George had a birthday party and half the cake was eaten. After the party, George, his parents, and his brother evenly split what's left over. I need you guys to write this as a multiplication problem. So I had half the cake, I split it, which is division, into three parts. But I need you guys to write that as a multiplication sentence for me. So in the chat, write it as a multiplication sentence. Every single one of you guys decided to write it pretty much as this, one half times three. Is one half times three the same as one half divided by three? Can those even possibly be the same thing? No, those can't possibly be the same thing. So for instance, think about it like this. If I had six divided by three, is that the same as six times three? No, so I can't just keep everything the same I can't just keep everything the same. I have to do something different to it. I have to do something different. When I write it as a multiplication sentence, what we're gonna do is what we saw in the video. We are going to K, C, F. We are gonna K, C, F. Who remembers what K, C, F stands for? Who can tell me? Cynthia, what does K, C, F stand for? Perfect. Um, oh, oh yeah, that, you could say convert, but we can say change. And then the F stands for flip. Yeah, perfect. Keep, change, flip. So we're going to exactly see how that works. Great job, Cynthia. I like to call it Kentucky Chicken Fried to help myself remember. I say Kentucky Chicken Fried. So yes, it stands for keep, change, flip. Let's look back at this. We keep our first fraction. We keep it as one half. We're gonna change our division sign. The opposite of division is multiplication. They are inverses of one another. And then we're gonna flip three. Camilla, how do you flip three? I'm gonna flip three and so I'm gonna write it like that. Right, Camilla? No. No? What? How do I do it? The whole number, you have to make it into a fraction by putting three over one. Perfect, because we always multiply fractions. Continue. And then you need to flip it to one over three. Yes, so we flip it to one over three. That is our sentence. That is it as a multiplication sentence. And then we can't cross cancel, so we uh, cross multiply and they each take home one-sixth of the whole cake. They each take home one-sixth of the whole cake. So KCF, keep, change, flip. Whenever you're doing division, you got a Kentucky uh, chicken fried. Whenever you're doing division, you got a Kentucky chicken fried. So dividing is multiplying by the reciprocal or as I like to call it, and watch my screen, watch my face, as I like to call it, the reciprocal. Do we see that? The reciprocal. So the reciprocal is when you flip the top and the bottom. That's it. Reciprocal is when you flip the top and the bottom. The actual terminology is reciprocal. That is the math word. I want you guys to find the reciprocal of each of these numbers. So find the reciprocal of one half, find the reciprocal of three sevenths, find the reciprocal of four fifths, and find the reciprocal of 10. Excellent. Jessica, what is the reciprocal of one half? Two. Two, exactly. It's two over one, also known as two. Excellent. Amelia, what is the reciprocal of three sevenths? Seven thirds. Marley, what is the reciprocal of four fifths? Five fourths. 
five fourths. And lastly, Lucas, what is the reciprocal of 10? One tenth. Perfect, because 10 as a fraction is 10 over one. So we just flip it. So with the thumbs up or a thumbs down, you guys find this easy so far? Do you find reciprocals easy? Yeah, reciprocals, these reciprocals, they're pretty easy. You just flip the numbers. So I want you guys to solve these problems. First things first, we have to do our keep, change, flip, our Kentucky chicken fried, which means I'm gonna keep this first one, one half. I'm gonna change this to a multiplication sign. And Delaney, what am I gonna change one third to? Three over one. Perfect, three over one. And we wanna keep it as that in the beginning. And you guys, nodding or shaking our heads, no. Can I cross cancel this one? Can I do any cross canceling? Yeah, from the small participants who were doing it, no, I can't cross cancel. This is already simplified, one, one, and two and three are not divisible by the same thing. So just as we know, we now across multiply. I get three over two. Who would like to make that into a mixed number for me? Who would like to make that into a mixed number? Let's see. Ella? Me! Okay, let me do it really fast. Oh. One and one, a two? Yeah, one and one half. Excellent. There's two ways you can do it. I was showing off the long division way earlier. Here's the long division way. This number, our denominator, always stays the same. Always stays the same. Two goes into three one time. That's gonna be our big number or our integer. And our remaining value, our remainder, which I never let us do remainders, but this is a different situation, is going to be one. So that's how I get it. The remainder is my new numerator. Our denominator always stays the same. And how many times it goes in, that is exactly our integer, our big number. You can also just do it in your head. You know, two goes into three one time. We take away that two and what's left is one. So there's several different ways that you can go about doing this. So exactly, you guys are rocking this so far. Dolan, I want you to read what this problem, one fourth divided by three eighths, would be as a multiplication problem. Okay. Four. Yep. You're gonna change division into multiplication. Perfect. And you're gonna change, I mean, flip three over eight into eight over three. And your answer, I have. But before out. we do it, Lucas, I see you. What can we do now, Lucas? A cross, no, I mean cross cancel. Cross cancel. Yes. What can I cross cancel, Lucas? Yeah, I was like, I was like, is Dolan gonna get his done? I did four, so you cross up. And make it a one and then you cross out the eight and make it a two. Excellent. These across num or these these crossed numbers are both divisible by the same thing. They're both divisible by four. We always want to cross cancel first because it means that we have simplified it as far as we possibly can. So what I want, we now across multiply. Sophia, when we across multiply, what do we get as our answer? Nine. Dolan, what's the answer? Uh, the answer is two over three. Perfect. Two thirds. It has nothing to do with the fact that that was three halves. It's just what ended up being our solution. I want you guys to do these two and then I'll call on you. So for this first problem, Lucas, I'm going to cross cancel right here, the two and the eight into a one and a four, and I'm going to get rid of these and turn them into a one and a one. Is that legal? No. No. Wait, why isn't that legal? The reason is you can't cross cancel with division. It must be multiplication. Oh yeah. I don't care. It must be multiplication. So you can't cross cancel right away with division. You can only cross cancel once you get it to be 
a multiplication problem. So you can't cross cancel with division. It must be multiplication. Okay, so let's see. I called on you, Lucas. So tell me the multiplication version of this. The multiplication version would be um, 8 over 3. Perfect. So 2 thirds times 8 over 3. Am I able to cross cancel anything? Um, no. No. I want Camilla, can you answer this for me? Sixteen over nine, which is also equal to um, one seven over nine. Perfect. One and seven ninths. Nine goes into sixteen one time. When I take that amount out, when I take nine out of sixteen, I get seven. So my answer is one and seven ninths. Excellent. Marley, can you please write? Five sixths divided by one third as a multiplication problem for me? Yes. First, you're going to want to get five sixths and put it in. So, just like that. Perfect. Just drop it down. Next. So, yeah, I changed the division into multiplication, and what's my last step? Yeah, flip the one-third into three over one. So now I want to see, Dolan, can I cross-cancel anything? Yes, you can. I was going to raise my hand. What can I cross-cancel? Six and three. Yeah. What are they both divisible by? Two. They're both divisible by three. Three. Okay. Three divided by three is what, Dolan? Three divided by three is one. What about six divided by three? Perfect. We know we simplified it all the way, so we just across multiply. Sophia, what do I get as my answer when I across multiply? Five times one is over two times one. Mm-hmm. Five over two. Perfect. Five over two. And I want to know, Amelia, can you please make that into a mixed number for me? Uh, yes. So I do the division trick. So, um, what you do is you make a division sign, and then you put five on the inside and two on the outside, and then five, two goes into five two times. Perfect. And um, then you uh, subtract five and um, four. That's Perfect. Um, and then you get one, and then you get two and a half. Perfect. So then we got our big number, our integer is two, our n remainder is one, and our denominator stays the same. This is the only time we use remainders in this class is when we're making it into fractions, and that's if you choose to do the long division way. Perfect. So let's take a vote for right here. One half divided by one third. Vote slower if you think it's two times one third, and vote faster if you think it is one half times three. So I want you to vote. Perfect. For the majority of you who voted, we voted for faster we voted for this and yes you are correct we go we do our kentucky chicken fried we do our keep we do our change and we do our flip so exactly you guys we do our keep change flip this would have been change or this would have been flip ki change keep that's not accurate that's not accurate it is go faster and just as a reminder you cannot cross cancel with division. It must be multiplication. So you can't, don't even start to think about cross canceling until you're multiplying. I want you guys to solve these ones as well. So Marjorie, I'm gonna go at this one and I'm gonna cross cancel, you know, the two becomes a one and the six becomes a three, right? Uh, no, you have to do the inverse. Oh, uh, I have to do multiplication first. So. What is the multiplication version of this sentence? It is um, two thirds of the point, the dot for the, multiple, for the multiplication, and then the six over one. Perfect. Now what can I do? And then now you can cross uh, cancel. Now I can. Okay, what does the six become? The six becomes a two, and the three becomes a one. Excellent. 
So now we across multiply it, and what do you get, Marjorie? I got four one, so just four. Perfect! She nailed it. Excellent work. Let me see too. Camilla, what about this second one? So you first you need to keep the three over four, and then you need to change the division symbol to a multiplication. Then you need to flip the eight over the one. Perfect. Can I do anything? And you could cross cancel the four and eight. Nice. So what does the eight become? The eight becomes a two and the four becomes a one. Excellent. I all cross multiply and what do I get as my answer? You get six. Six over one, which is six. Excellent work, you guys. Excellent work. Like I said, you just have to remember you cannot cross cancel with division. You can't cross cancel with division. As Lucas asked earlier in the chapter, or in the chapter in this lesson, he said, can I cross cancel if there's a bigger number in the numerator and a smaller in the denominator? Or he said, can I cross cancel if there's a smaller number in the numerator and a bigger in the denominator? You can cross cancel whenever you want if they're both divisible by the same thing. They don't have to be the same number. It doesn't matter what numbers they are. If they are both divisible by the same thing, then yes, it works. So Sophia, the first one, how can I write this as a multiplication sentence? So I write five seven. Perfect. Perfect, because as a fraction, this is 10 over 1, so we flip it. What'd you do next? Um, then I cross cancel 5 and 10. So exactly, we look, this is our cross canceling, when we do it like this. So when we do it like this, 7 and 1, we can't cross cancel. So 5 and 10, we can. What are they both divisible by, Sophia? By, uh, by 2. They're not divisible by 2, they're divisible by 5. Everybody always makes that mistake, though. Don't worry, everybody always does that. So they're divisible by five. What's five divided by five? One, and then two divided by five is two. Uh, I mean, sorry, I and, the answer. And ten divided by five is two. Excellent. So all I did is I simplified them. I divided them by their greatest common factor, which was five. It is not always going to be whatever the number is. could be divided by two. It could be divided by something else. It could be divided by anything. So... Now what do you do? We are going to across multiply, and what do you get as your answer? So I got 1 over 14. Perfect, 1 over 14. And since we cross canceled in the beginning, we already know that it's going to be the most simplified. So Marjorie, write this as a multiplication sentence for me. Okay, so I uh, made I put the dot for the multiplication first, and then I made, did the inverse. I put 1 over 4, and Perfect. Can I cross cancel? Yeah. So what can I do? Four turns into one and the eight turns into a two. Perfect. They're both divisible by four. And then I'm going to across multiply. And when I across multiply, what do I get? I get two over nine. Perfect. Two over nine. I wanted to congratulate in the chat. We have Amelia who got it correct. Camilla got it correct. Uh, we have Lucas who got it correct. We have... Those were the ones that submitted it in the chat. So congratulations, you guys. You did really, really well. What about these two? I want you to do these two. Abner, what do we say? How do we make this into a multiplication sentence? What is it as a multiplication sentence? Okay, I'm pretty sure it's going to be um, 8 divided by... No. Mm-hmm. Divided by 8? So we're going to keep, we keep the 4 over 5. Mm -hmm. Then what do we change the division sign to? Or times. Times, or multiplication. And what does this 8 become? We flip it. What does it become? Um, 8, no, what, 8? Yeah, 1 over 8. Perfect. Can I cross cancel anything? Um, yeah. What can I cross cancel? Eight. Perfect. What are they both divisible by? Blaney, can you step in and help Abner right now just for what uh, four and eight are both divisible by? Um, four um, is going to be one and then two is going to be 
Uh, and the eight will be two. Yeah, they are both divisible by four. They're both divisible by four. Excellent. Now, Abner, I want you to multiply these together. What is one times one? One. What is five times two? Um, five times two, five, ten. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So we get our answer to be one tenth. Excellent. Sophie, what about this next one? Mm-hmm. Times one four. Yes. Can I cross cancel? Cross out the twelve and the four. Yeah. And you can they can both go into four. Perfect. Four they're both divisible by four. Four becomes a one and the twelve becomes a three. Excellent. Now we across multiply. When we across multiply, Sophie, what do we get? You get three thirteenths. Perfect. Look at you guys. You're nailing it. So let's see this one. Ramon is making party favors. He is dividing three-fourth pounds of almonds into 12 packages. Write and solve an equation to find out how many pounds of almonds are in each package. So... We break this down. He is dividing 3.4 pounds into 12 packages. So Jessica, is it gonna be 3 fourths divided into 12 packages or 12 divided into 3 fourth pounds? What do we think? Perfect, 3 fourths divided into 12, excellent. So let's do it as a multiplication problem. How do I write this as multiplication? Perfect. Keep the three fourths. You turn the division into multiplication. Into multiplication. Excellent. And then you put one over twelve. Yes. Perfect. Great job. Do you know if you can cross cancel anything here? Yeah. What can we cross cancel? Yes, we can cross cancel the 3 and the 12. What are they both divisible by? Four. Ooh, everybody always does that. They're both divisible by 3. Everybody always says the answer. It's very funny. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and this is why you said 4. What is 12 divided by 3? Four. Yeah, everybody does that. Every single person. So then we're going to across multiply. What's one times one? One. What's four times four? Sixteen. Perfect. So there are six, one sixteenth pounds of almonds in each package. Great job. Go to guided practice, page 320. Guided practice, page 320. I'm going to write it here in the corner so we can see it. Jackson, this first one, tell me it is a multiplication sentence. Jackson got booped. Delaney, write this as a multiplication sentence for me. So, you put um, one over four. Yep. Um, this, and then two um, over one. Perfect. Can I do anything? What can I do? You can cross, uh, cross out a uh, two and four and make it one and like uh, make two one and make four two. Perfect. We across multiply and what do we get as our answer? You get um, one and one over two. Perfect. Ava, can you write this one as a multiplication sentence for me? You can write it as three over two. Can I cross cancel anything? Um, so we can cross cancel out the three and the six. They're both divisible by three. What is three divided by three, Ava? What is six divided by three? 
too. So we're going to across multiply. What is 5 times 1? What is 2 times 2? 4. Dolan, can you make that into a mixed number for me? Yeah, sure. What is it? One fourth. Perfect. We're going to spend all of Monday working on this. So if you don't get it now, that's okay. Greg, what about this one? So what is this as a multiplication sentence? Uh -huh. So we keep the one eight, we change the division to multiplication, and we flip three. Three over one. When I flip it, what does it become? Um, one third. One third. We can't cross cancel. We across multiply. What's one times one? One. What's eight times three? Uh, twenty. Twenty-four. Perfect. We get one twenty-fourth. Kylie, we don't need to write a story context. I just want the multiplication sentence. Can you give me the multiplication sentence? Jessica, what is this as a multiplication sentence? Uh, two, two, three times six over five. Perfect. Can I cross cancel anything? Yes. What can I cross cancel? The two and the six. Ooh, the six and the three, because they're the ones that are cross. But they're divisible by what? Two. They're both divisible by three. Everybody does that whole same thing. Three divided by three is? Yep, and then 6 divided by 3 is? Uh, two. That's why everybody does that same thing. We all cross multiply. Jessica, what's 2 times 2? Two? 4. What's 1 times five? 5? Lucas, last problem. A neighborhood garden that is 2 thirds of an acre is to be divided into 4 equal sections. So we get 2 thirds divided by 4. Can you write that as a multiplication sentence for me, Lucas? Yeah, it's two, it's two thirds times one over four. Can I cross cancel anything? Yes. What can I cross cancel? Two and four. You would cross out the two, make it a one, and then cross out the four and make it a two. Then we across multiply, and what do you get? Perfect. You guys are nailing this. Your homework is page 321, numbers 1 through 8.